Hey, this is voice actor Cassandra Lee Morris. Welcome to Now You See Me. I've voiced hundreds of characters for anime, video games, and animation, and I realized people know a lot about the characters I play, but very little about the real me. So, I started this podcast to pull back the curtain on my life, share more about myself, and what I've gone through. Along the way, I'll be interviewing guests, some well-known and others behind the scenes, to dig into their lives and find out what they've overcome to achieve their artistic goals. I hope this podcast will enlighten and inspire you to live your best creative life. Together, we'll all learn that there's more to someone than the stories they tell. Hey everyone, this is Cassandra Lee Morris. Welcome to my podcast, Now You See Me. I have a very special guest, one of my best friends, which is why we can't stop laughing right now. This is Tara Sands. Hi. I've known her for a very long time, but I don't know everything about her. <laughs> Clearly, no. <laughs> Clearly I don't. Um, She's going to learn a little bit about me today. I'm going to learn a lot. Um, you might know Tara as the voice of your favorite Pokemon, Bulbasaur, um, <laughs> but I know Tara as just a weird person that I hang out with. <laughs> We should, should we start from the beginning? The beginning. Our meet cute? Our meet cute, yeah. We have a very, we have a good meet cute, kind of. Well, we okay. have a, like a, a reintroduction meet cute. We do. Okay, so rewind. We were both actors in New York City. Um, we were with the same agency. As kids. As actually. kids. Yeah. We were children. <laughs> that was well, a bad, I was I, in high I, school, but yeah. I, mean, I was, yeah, I was you in were like kid. middle school. That's whatever. Anyway, side note. Don't go into acting if you're, like, a teenager. It's just not. There's time. We, we you got up, plenty of time, kids. Yeah, we grew up very strange. Oh, we could get into that. Anyway. Sure. Um, so we were with the same agency, and who booked every voiceover job? It was Tara Sands. No. No, no, but that was my perspective. That was your perception. Yeah. But that was so not, that's so no, funny no, no. to me. They were like, oh, sorry, uh, Tara Sands booked it again. But you were so close. So that's how I knew you, as just like a really talented God, person that booked everything. That's so funny. That's so not, and that's so not the perception that I had of myself then either, as someone who, I, well. well, because one of my good friends, who's an amazing, her name is Ashley, she's an amazing voiceover artist, was working circles around me. And in, in the best possible way, and this yeah. leads to other conversations, but I, I felt like, oh, I can't keep up with my friends. Wow. So it's so funny to me that that, and flattering, but weird, that that was your perception. Oh, it was 100%. <laughs> and then, like... I didn't work that much. <laughs> fast forward a number of years, um, Tara Sands moved to L.A., and my agent told me, you will now be booking more work because Tara Sands has moved. So well, the, we same, like the same agent said to me... <laughs> <laughs> You're moving to L.A. while Cassandra Morris is going to get all your work. And my response was, and I thought this was very healthy of me, oh, good, I like her a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I, I never see the need to um, create tension or competitiveness among actors, especially yeah. from an agent. Yeah. She who shall not be named. But it was, that to me was like, wow, is that, that what a strange way to look at it. I always thought there's enough work for everybody and when my, my feeling was always, oh, did Ashley book that? Well, then she'll buy lunch today. And that was how I kept myself from being jealous. I, there's enough work. I'm making a living. I'm doing fine. I don't need to compare myself. I don't need, and it's hard not to. I mean, we all, we're is. all guilty of it. Yeah. Um, but that's such a healthy perspective that you have. And I feel like it took me a really long time to figure out that that's the perspective to have. I think I was in like my mid twenties when I finally figured that out. That was around that time. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. It was. I, I wasn't a kid. Yeah. Yeah. It took, no, oh, it's, it took it's a minute. It's impossible when you're a kid. I was insanely but. jealous of some of, especially yeah. doing theater. My friends were working on Broadway, and you know, again, they're my friends, and I'm so there's that weird line of like, I'm so happy for you. I'm so jealous. Yeah. Um, and it, I think that's in every aspect of life. Like, totally. I'm so jealous you can rock those sneakers, those Doc Martens. Like, <laughs> I can be jealous. That I'm happy for you that you look great in them. But I'm jealous. Like, I don't think I could pull those off. So I think it. I think when you realize it's not just about work, it's about yeah. everything. It's yeah. You kind of. I mean, how can you go through life just? I have one hair that's like making me crazy. Cute. Okay. 
like you said so many things that I really love and that I think is important for people to hear who want to have a creative career. And the first one was there's enough work to go around. Like there really are enough opportunities for everybody. Everybody who's good. Right. That's what I'll say. Yeah. I think this business weeds out. It does. <laughs> it and that's fine. You know what? That's healthy. So I'm sure dentistry does that too. Like any yeah. any profession is going to, painting or sales, the law. sales, law. It, <laughs> if you're not good at it, you're not going to work. So I think for the people who are good. Yeah. <laughs> I know that sounds harsh. No, but like it's, I mean, I don't know. I, I didn't grow up in the everybody receives a ribbon like for participate. I didn't grow up getting participation Me ribbons. Yeah. So I think maybe for people who, uh, I might get canceled for this right now. It's fine. <gasps> I think for people who did, like they can have like the perspective of like, Entitlement. Entitlement, yeah. yeah. But we didn't grow up like that. Yeah, yeah, the reality is, like, in, if you want to be successful at anything, even being an accountant, you have to, like, work yeah. really hard. I've left several accountants because they weren't good. <laughs> I did. Actually, that's true. It's true. <laughs> I mean, they would make mistakes. And it, you know what? The, the truth was, it wasn't that they made mistakes. It was how they handled the mistakes. Yeah. And this, now Cassandra and I share an accountant. We do. Um, and <laughs> Fascinating. But, but I have to say, the way, like, he screwed something up, there was something, but he was like, hey, I'm going to comp you for this other thing. And he handled it so professionally that I was That's like, good. done, I'm good. Like, yeah. this is great. Yeah. Yeah. It's all how you handle those mistakes. Yeah. And he has a lot of clients because of that. I'm sure. He has so yeah. many clients <laughs> now that I have to schedule, like, two months in advance if I want to meet with him. <laughs> Not really, but... Anyway, um, shout out to our accountant. What up, Chris? <laughs> um, <laughs> anyway, um, when I finally gained the perspective of there's enough work to go around, and like what I, the only thing I can control is doing a good audition. After that, like you submit it and it's out and. It, you have no control over and it. Even a good audition doesn't mean you're like. No, it does not mean that you're gonna book it. No. There's so many times, like, <laughs> side. Okay, side note. I will tell you guys a story. Major video game company. Um, I'm sure you, you probably heard of them. You may have even played the game. But I'm not gonna say what it is because I don't even know like what I could talk about. But um, I went in for a callback for a different character, and I had. A, like a year and a half or two years prior, I'd gotten a callback for a different character on this game. And I was really excited about it, but I never heard anything, and that's just the name of the game. So anyway, I go in like two years later for a callback for a different character. And the casting director's like, hey, oh, Cassandra, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Um, you submitted one of the best auditions we've ever heard for X character, the character that I, that I had auditioned for two years ago. And I was like, oh my gosh, thank you, that's so nice. And then I couldn't help myself, I was like, why didn't I book it? <laughs> and they were like, well, we decided not to even make the character. And that's the stuff you never <laughs> you learn. Have, you have no control if, over And that. if you hadn't gone in, you wouldn't have known. I, I did an episode of, a, a couple episodes of <laughs> and I had, I went in for the audition and I had a bunch of lines and I booked it, but then I got to set and they handed me different lines and it was a lot less. And that, which is, again, happens. It happens. Fine. But what, but what was so kind is that a producer came over to me and said, hey, just so you know, they gave the part to someone's friend. Oh. And, but you know what? That made everything, I was like out of my control. And it yeah. wasn't that they changed their mind, that, oh, she's, we need, let's give her. Like, and then they brought me back to play a different character. That's awesome. Like, it was, but to me, I was like, thank, and I thanked him profusely. I was like, that's the stuff we never hear. Yeah. And I really, like, you don't know the weight you took off of me by here. Like, just, I remember there was one project I got a call back for, and then it went to the director's fr sister. And that's, and it again, happens. That's, that's fine. She was great. Yeah. So, uh, you know. It happens. Unfortunately, so much of this industry does run on nepotism. <laughs> and there's just nobody overseeing it, and nobody cares. And when you're an only child, you do not have any sisters, and, like me, you don't have yeah. any sisters and brothers to hire you. <laughs> but to, to take it back, because I'm sure we have, like, an anime fan base watching. Sure, yeah. So I auditioned originally for Hunter Hunter, and I, I don't hold on to auditions. I usually can forget. Yeah. I auditioned for the two lead boys, and I remember really, like, just connecting and really wanting them. And... 
not getting it and being like, okay. And then, you know, season, a couple seasons later, they brought me in to play Biscuit, which I never would have gotten if I had played the boy roles. And I, and turned out to be one of my favorite things I've ever done. Aww. So I'm like, it all, it all kind of works out. I'm not real hoo-ha, hoo-hoo, woo-hoo. What's the word? Woo-hoo? woo-hoo. I'm not real woo-hoo. I'm, which you no, know. No, it's woo-woo. She's I'm, woo-woo. I'm very woo. I'm not Tara woo. is opposite. No, I'm no, I'm, there's no woo. Um, <laughs> There's no woo in my woo, but I I realized it worked out the way it was supposed to, and maybe the casting person knew that and was like, you know what? Let's keep her in mind. There's something more more suit that suits her better, yeah. and the people who play the roles are obviously fantastic, yeah. and I get why they booked them. <laughs> yeah, it's like our job and anybody's job as a creative person is to just show up, do the work. And then just leave it. Like yeah, that's out of your that's hands. all that's all you can do. And also like I I enjoy the process of like I enjoy acting. Yeah. I, I've always loved it. It's something I've always loved to do. And just auditioning is getting to act. Getting to do your the job yeah. that you want to do. Even though you're not getting paid. People, like <laughs> but what's funny is like you say, like you go and you do your job and that's all you can do. Like we don't know what takes they're gonna use. We don't know. Yeah. So people always are like, why don't you watch your own stuff? I'm like, because they sometimes use takes and I'm like, ew, why did I say it? Why did they pick why did I ew, ah, I you're hate judging me. you're judging yourself. Yeah. Don't judge yourself. No, but I'd rather, to me, I, I don't need to watch it. Like, it's, yeah. I, I want to, because I always want to, and once in a while I will watch something, and uh, it happens rarely that I'm like, ooh, I like that. That's and that's cool. fun. Yeah. But I also, I also don't want to feed that ego side of me. I just feel like yeah. there's pluses and minuses to both, so I kind of just stay away. <laughs> yeah. I, Although we did watch together a show we worked on because we li- really liked it. Dino Girl Gauku. Dino Girl. Or Gauko? G- Dino Girl. Dino Girl on Netflix. Oh like, gosh, it's, it's, it's so cute. Like, it's so sweet. But we yeah. just, it was one of the first shows we were like, this is good. And it didn't get the attention it deserved. And that's the other thing. So like yeah. you think of those creators, right, who are like, we did it. We wrote this great show. And we love it. But I don't think it was, it just didn't get the attention or the push yeah. it needed. And maybe it's huge somewhere else. I don't, I don't know the answer to that. Yeah, I don't know. But so I think about those creators, and they go through the same stuff that we internally go through, mm-hmm. except that they spend a lot more time on it. Yeah. But all their job as creators is just to create it and put it out into the world. And after that, it's, they did their job. They did their job, it's, but, it's, but sadly, they it. sadly, there are, re, like, you know, people look at numbers, people look at reviews, people look, and that affects how... So it's a, it's a matter of, you know, affects what jobs they get in the future. So it's figuring out how much do I care, how much can I care to be yeah. healthy and competitive, yeah, but not beat myself up. I guess it's fine. To, it's, that's the weird healthy balance. Yeah, I think you have actually found a really healthy balance. And that's one of the reasons really? why I think, no, I think you have because that's one of the reasons that we are such good friends and that <laughs> we've been friends for so long. Yeah. Well, so, okay, let's fast I forward. I think you get it. You, well, we'll go into, okay. I fast get it. Forward to fast met. forward to when we re-met. Okay. Because we so, liked each other. We just didn't really know each other. Yeah. In New York. Yeah. Then I moved to LA and I think we were working on an audiobook together or something. That's the first time I remember calling you. Do you remember me calling you? I felt so awkward I think about that it, was but. after we were friends. No, I, I remember it, it because oh, okay. I'll tell you why. Tell me. <laughs> because I was on the phone with you when we were going over it, and I went to put my laundry in, and my I had left my phone on there. Cause, oh, I, I was waiting for you to call me to go over it, <laughs> and and I dumped my stuff in the laundry, and my phone was in there, and I and my <laughs> messed up my phone, and I remember thinking like in a funny way, freaking Cassandra, <laughs> and like because. But again, like, well, obviously not your fault, but I always associate you with throwing my thing in the laundry. I think, <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> but it's not weird because, because you've been that in my mind and I've never told you that. No, that's fascinating. I, I, <laughs> but isn't it weird that like you can be that weird, you can stand for something or represent something in somebody's life that they never know that yeah. you never know you represent. Yeah, them. no, that's, but I'm sorry. It wasn't your <laughs> fault. It was not your fault. Uh, yeah. So, uh, so whatever. So I think we it, whatever. We re- at a dinner we party. Were, wait, at a di- 
Oh, at, at, that's how we remet. At Mark's? Yes. Oh, okay, okay. That is how we remet. Okay, we re, we remet at a dinner party. This sounds so LA. Like I don't even go to dinner parties. Was anymore. it like a game night dinner? I know. No. Yeah. One, it, was it was like a game like night a, or something. It was like a little get together, and we were like, "Oh, hey, cool. What's up?" And then we <laughs> discovered that we both are obsessed with the trashy reality show Dance Moms. Yeah. And as soon as we said that to each other, we were like, "Oh, I understand you on like a whole <laughs> other level now." Yeah, I got you. Yeah. Like I feel like I didn't know your sense of humor. I didn't know what like. As soon as I, I realized that you understood how funny Dance Moms was, yes. I was like, oh, I, I get her now. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because like we both <laughs> so watch stupid. it. With, like, so stupid. Yeah, but we both love trashy reality TV. Uh, like, but here's Welcome the to thing. Plathville, like, when that is gold. When Cassandra I mean, yeah. asks me to watch a reality show, mm -hmm. I watch it. When I ask her to watch season three of Love is Blind, I, I just can't. <laughs> if. Our friendship kind of hinges on it. Oh, God. Well, we need a new show. That, we do need I do a feel new like show. we're closer when we have a show. We do talk more when we are texting, like, so on our couches at, like, 9 p.m. Like, are you seeing this right now? Like, this is insane. Yeah. <laughs> it's so dumb. Anyway, so then we re-met. And but we were still, like, competitors. Oh, yeah. But it, like, never really affected our friendship. No, and if anything, it enhanced it because yeah. we helped each other. There were times right. when I'd be like, hey, did you read on this? This is like, or she would do that for me. Like, it just. Yeah, like we would talk about, um, like, did you get this audition? Or did you hear back about this? Or there's been times when, like, you've actually recommended me for a job. Oh, yeah. And, like, vice versa. And I can't even tell you how rare that is. It is, but I think the reason we can do that is because, first of all, I know you're not desperate and hungry. There are when yeah. I, I, and that's, that's unfair to say, but when I meet someone who is just starting out. And they just want to book that first job. And look, I have been there. I don't trust why they're friends with me. I oh. never questioned that I, you never needed anything or wanted anything from yeah. me. And, I, and, and that's a bummer to say, but yeah. I think, I think we were at the same, we were peers. Right. So it, it we were easy. working the same amount, Yeah, I feel like. We had the same agency. We were getting the same auditions. We could so complain about the same things? We, yeah. That's a big, that's a you big one. You love complaining. Oh, so do I, whatever. Yeah. I'll admit to it's it. It's fun to bitch about <laughs> stuff. To, I mean, that's what friends do. <laughs> what, right. So even if it's like, I mean, we've been on jobs where we're like, oh, that session was torture. Yeah. Or like, you Sometimes know, it's rough. You hate singing sessions, and I, I, I get sing. it. I can't sing. I can't do it anymore. I'm just not doing it. But no, but I mean, but it's good that like we have this point of reference. I can be yeah. like, no, you know what? Like they were actually difficult to, to, to work with. It wasn't you. Yeah. Like, and, and what's funny is I remember, so you felt really inexperienced singing and you talked to me. And I then, am. And then I talked to someone who I feel is much more experienced than me who was having trouble and she made me feel better. So it was like this oh, chain cool. of us boosting each other's confidence. Yeah. And that's like a healthy friendship with somebody in the same industry as yeah. you. But again, it is so rare. Like, uh, I don't know, I feel like there's like one or two other people I can think of right now who like I really feel close to and we compete, compete, yeah. whatever. Like 200 people audition for every role at least. So yeah, I it's feel not like it's, <laughs> It's not like we're like neck and neck with like one person all the time. Well, now I'm just thinking of ways to like sabotage you. Oh, yeah. Because that could be about, like invite you to very loud places so you lose your voice and can't. <laughs> I mean, I could like I, cut a wire in I my feel home like studio. that happened. I feel like the competitiveness was more so for the on camera work than in voiceover. I, mm -hmm. For those of you who don't know, so, you know, now you guys hear that we're auditioning from home all the time. And, but in New York, we would go to auditions. And, I mean, I had a group of friends who I literally would go from audition to audition with. Yeah. And we all knew each other. It was impossible to not be friends, you know. So yeah. you were a tiny bit younger, so yeah. you didn't experience that the same way. But I think that you had to, if you didn't learn from that, then you were never going to learn how to right. do, and I, do this. Right. And I have a friend who we were the same age and had the same agency. <laughs> and it was like the same thing. And that, I did that with her. Like, we like met on an audition. I like knew her brother. And oh, yes. I know you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. Shout out Mary Ellen. She doesn't what really a, act anymore. Hey, Pierce. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, like, 
we were with the same agency and I saw her on an audition and in the, in the waiting room because we used to have to go into a studio, wait our turn, whatever. <laughs> totally different And we different just now. like hit it off and then I was like, hey, do you want to go like vintage shopping on Saturday? <laughs> and she's like, yeah. And like it started. That's Cassandra's feeler for new friends. <laughs> do you like vintage? <laughs> Can you shop with me? <laughs> we're going to be friends. That or trashy reality TV. We're good. <laughs> I feel like, you know, it's like, it's, it's hard, but it's all about, like, once you get into the mentality of, like, I am a professional, I'm doing the job the best I can, I am working, and there is enough work for everybody. Like, if you can wrap your yeah. head around that, then you can, like, transcend and actually be friends. Yeah. Okay, so actually, I mean, I know we can have, like, funny stories about this, but, like, for real, our uh -uh. For, my first agent was, it was, like, a really... It was a messed up relationship where mm -hmm. she like... I mean, the same agent for me, so... She was super controlling. She would scream at me all the time. She would like make me cry. Yeah, it's not... It was not healthy. And I thought that was normal. And yeah. I signed with her when I was like 12 or 13. So I like grew up thinking that an agent is supposed to be like this domineering, overbearing... No. Like... That's like what you see on yeah. TV shows. She was sort of like a... a uh, a caricature? Yeah. Yes. In some, I mean, yeah. Without getting into too much detail, but that's it's not healthy. It's not healthy no. to yell at clients. It's not healthy to yell at the c casting people who can give your clients work. You can still, and, and it's a bummer because there are people who, in general, are good at their jobs but not kind. And not, uh, yeah. And I think that's the difference. Like when I when I was talking about. Oh, good, Cassandra Mars will get work. I'm thrilled if I don't get the job. I want it to go to someone I like. Right. I'm only bummed when it goes to a jerk. Yeah. <laughs> That's when I'm bummed. <laughs> like, you know she what I would, mean? But she would foster <clears throat> that competitiveness. Because yeah. she tried to do that, like, with other people at the agency that I knew. <sighs> that it's so unhealthy. I was, like, um, acquaintances with, like, not as good friends as you or Mary Ellen, but, like, you know, you see somebody all the time, sometimes you go out to coffee, whatever. She was, she just fostered a really bad environment, and it wasn't until I moved to L.A. and got a different agent, and actually, <laughs> that I realized that that was, uh, that was unhealthy, and also, one time I was in a and session. And not the norm, not the norm. Not I mean, the norm at all. wonderful agents over the years. Yeah, They're that's, great, that was the exception, not the norm. Beings. Yeah. But I feel like once I got out of that situation, I my career did better. Yeah, I'm sorry. You, I, I felt I feel like I was lucky enough that that I worked with a lot of different people and yeah. I freelanced and stuff. But I'm I feel so bad that that was your experience. It it's a it was yeah. so messed. Up. <laughs> yeah, like I'm sorry you thought that was okay and normal. And I think, you know, listen. I think that's an and again this relates to whatever you guys do. That that's not. Yeah, Healthy. so the reason I wanted to bring it up is, like, even if somebody seemingly, like, holds the key, because it was a power dynamic. Right. It was like, she held the key of whether I went on an audition. But, like, little did I know, I went out for every audition. Like, she needed me because I was booking stuff. Yeah, she made your, if they, they make money if we make money. Right. Yeah. So if anybody is ever, like, screaming at you, like holding like some power no what over you your do. head. If you work at McDonald's or you yeah. work at a factory or you work on a film set, yeah. that's just not how you communicate. Yeah, yeah, that's not normal. And unfortunately, I didn't know that for many, many, many years. I'm sorry. <laughs> Whatever. She's doing great now, though. Yeah, I'm much better. <laughs> she has very nice agents now. I do. The agents are much nicer. They're sane. <laughs> Um, I still get lots of auditions, <laughs> and I don't feel afraid to reach out to them. <laughs> Next topic. <laughs> uh, okay. So, is, has there... Okay, I found one of the things that when I really started transitioning to, like, making a living full-time mm -hmm. as a voice actor and not having, like, a, a million side jobs... Because that's another thing that I feel like people don't ever talk about is that, oh. like, you could be on a show and you could also have another, <laughs> a whole other job. 
everyone on Pokemon had another job. I mean, yeah. we were on the number one t- like cartoon in the country. And but it didn't pay a lot. No. Yeah. I would <laughs> go to my temp job. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I'll tell you what I think is weirder than that. Well, so, yeah. So, I think people today don't realize they're, you're going to have a day job for a while. A like, long and that's time. that's very normal. You could have a day job your entire acting or creative career, and it does not make you any less of an actor yeah. or creative. Mm-hmm. It does not. But what I think is funny is people's perception of what I make. And I hate talking about money like that, but... There's like, I, there are people in my life who say things to me like, well, you're on blah, blah, blah. You should go buy that car. And I'm like, you, you have no idea what my life is like. Yeah. It's um, like, it would be nice to be like Reese Witherspoon, Jennifer Lawrence. But <laughs> those are like the exceptions. Well, also, I mean, I think it's worth talking about that I, my bread and butter used to be commercial work, commercial voiceover for radio and television. And if you listen to those commercials now... Um, they're done by celebrities. There's, yep. It used to be not cool for celebrities to do uh, ads. Endorsements. Endorsements. Now everybody does it. Um, yeah, <laughs> I mean, but but it really, I mean, it legitimately has taken a, a big portion of work from from everyday working actors who are not names. When when Tina Fey and Jennifer Aniston and uh, just George Clooney, I mean, they're all doing commercials. John Hamm. John Hamm. I mean. I, I don't totally understand why, because when is it enough money, first of all? And is it just the people that work for them encouraging them because they're all going to make money yeah, off of it? Yeah, the agents, they get that 10%. And, and I know that a lot of those, those celebrities do feel indebted to their agents and mm-hmm. will go do some of that stuff to throw them a bone. Yeah. Alec Baldwin, I remember, famously did a Capital One commercial and it was all donated. And I remember That's thinking, cool. That's awesome. It was, I forgot what, what uh, yeah. you know, he's a controversial person, but... But if you're going to do it, at least. Like, I was like, I can't begrudge that. Yeah. But I do have a problem with, <laughs> with some of these other people taking that work from, you know, a lot. I'm amazed at how many actors are not making their insurance. Yeah. Uh, it's, t- it's tough. It's not an easy business. I, it's not. And I think this speaks to, um, like, reinventing yourself all the time. And that is, I mean, that's difficult because you know, you feel like you, you can feel like you've hit your stride, that you are in a niche, that you know a lot of people, that you're working. And but getting typecast, that's not a bad thing. No. It's like if you're known for something, you could work on it a lot, but all of a sudden the industry could just change. Well, the, and then you're the like, styles, well, I just tweeted about this, like <clears throat> styles change. Yeah. You know, we have different, like when you get a, a script, a commercial script mostly, but animation too, there's a prototype that is a trend for you. Like, I remember it was Janine Garofalo for years. Oh, Janine yeah. Garofalo <laughs> type. Um, and it was like this very deadpan read. It wasn't vocal fry yet, but it was like, I don't care. Just buy it if you want it. I, I'm never good at those. I never book this. Now, every, every, anytime there's a husband-wife spot, it's modern family. Still, even after all this. So, like, there's different mm. things. And if you, again, if your read is, is this... Selly, Selly, Perky Reed. Oh, yeah. It's not what's going to book right now. No one wants that. And <laughs> I, yeah, I remember, I remember someone playing me a demo of someone else's, and I was like, it's really good, but it's not on trend. Yeah. And if you're going to spend all that money to make a demo, make it with someone who understands what is booking what's, and working. And yeah. someone who's watching commercials. Literally, that's what I used to do. I used to sit and watch commercials. That's so smart. I remember on the radio, someone would start changing the channel. I'm like, no, 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 no. This is a commercial. You need to hear. Yeah. <laughs> You're doing re- it's re- research. It's research. <laughs> it's research. It's research. I talk for a living. It's research. <laughs> Let's do that for the rest of it. Okay, that won't be annoying at all. No. <laughs> Has there been anything like that you've gone through personally that you felt like you had to kind of overcome that before you could like blossom as an actor? I think it was the jealousy thing. The jealousy, yeah. Yeah, I think once I, I don't remember what age that was. I also, I think stopping doing on camera work was a big, I think I was trying to do too many things. Yeah. And I wanted to be good at everything and I wanted to put real energy into everything. And once I said, you know what, I love voiceover. Why am I, you know, a, a voiceover audition from home could take 10, 20 minutes, but then I would go for a three line audition and 
and get all dressed up and drive and wait and sit. And mm -hmm. I was like, you know what? I, I love voiceover enough that I'd rather put an extra half hour into that voiceover audition and not get in my car and not do a, and spin my wheels. And then it, it's a lot. Listen, I, I, I don't, I think equal, they take an equal amount of talent, but one, because it's on camera, requires a whole other level of, yeah. of work. So I'm, yeah. in, I'm in awe of the people I know who are maintaining both on camera and voiceover careers in a, in a serious way. So I think once I kind of decided I'm not gonna, and I, listen, I got to work with Aaron Sorkin, I got to work on some really cool projects, and I hosted that show for a while, and I think mm -hmm. I, said to myself, you know what, I'm happy with the work I've done. Yeah. I can, I can stop now and be proud of what I did. That's cool. Yeah, and it took that for me then to put all my energy, and that's when I started doing more audiobooks, and yeah. so I think that, that block of like, I need to do everything, mm -hmm. freed me up to be better at one thing. That's really interesting. So when, because, okay, I feel like sometimes I'm like, it's never enough, it's never enough, it's never enough. Like, I have to book this, or yeah. I won't be happy until I book this kind of a right. role, or this job. So how did you, like, wrap your head around that for TV stuff? I was so low on a, the totem pole for that stuff that I feel like mm -hmm. just working felt good. Mm -hmm. But with voiceover, I still do that. I still beat myself up like that. Yeah, yeah it's hard. For sure. It's hard not to... Yeah, yeah, no, I mean... Because I, we're, um, we're competitive with ourselves. Yeah. I think that's probably our current downfall. Yeah. Is that, like, I, I've always, to a fault, expected way too much of myself. <laughs> and I can, like, look back at And it's why you're successful like, in some ways. Like, there's a healthy ways. amount of it. There's a healthy amount, and then there's, like, me three years ago, <laughs> which was not healthy at all. There was a time where I didn't have a day off for five months. I would just work 24-7, even on Saturday and Sunday. And it didn't make and you any not, happier. It didn't make me any happier because it still never felt like enough. Yeah. And I, I was, like, miserable. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't even enjoy, like, really cool things that were happening. Like, there was one well, that's, month. that's it. You can't enjoy yeah. the, the cool stuff you're doing because you're so... I mean, and there's the added level of I can't lose my voice. So there's right. things I would get invited to that I'd be like, I really want to go to that. I know how loud that restaurant is. Yeah. <laughs> and I have to work the next day. Yeah. And you do. I sacrificed yeah. a lot of social things. I've sacrificed a lot of, like, relationships. Like, I feel like we're yeah. also close because we get it. Yeah, if you tell me but, I can't talk, I get it. Yeah, you're not going to be offended or <laughs> no. whatever. But, yeah, it's, I had to draw the line. And now, like, I refuse. I won't even do an audition on Saturday or Sunday. I will not do any, like, I just need that time I have for not gotten to that point. Oh, man. But, but I also, sometimes during the week, I'll, I'll, I'll know I'm going to work on the weekend, so I'll do things like errands during the week when I know things aren't busy, and I'll say, you know what, I have time Saturday, I can do this, but I'm going to enjoy going and doing this errand much more on a weekday because it won't be crowded. Yeah. So, like, I think I pick and choose. Like, this weekend, I know I'm working all weekend. Oh, man. But I can't do that anymore. I, I, like, won't let myself do it. Honestly? Oh, but the exception is conventions. That's working on the yeah, weekends. Yeah, that is working on the weekends. So I yeah. have to, like, make up for it during the week. I saw somebody say online recently, and this really hit home for me. I, I wish I could remember who said it. Um, is that there's a lot of controversy right now about anime rates and things like yeah. that. And rates throughout the industry. Um, and they said that one of the companies said, well, we don't, we're not going to pay anymore because we know you're going to conventions and making money. And their response was, so you're telling me that I have to work on the weekends to make a living wage because you don't want to pay a living wage for this job. Yeah. So you're saying you better go work on the weekends to make what you should be making on this anime project. And that's not okay. No, I don't and think that's it was okay. The, it was the best, it was more succinctly put than that. But yeah. I was like, oh, wow, yeah, like, I, the, the, those conventions are a bonus, but we still should be paid a living wage when we're working. A hundred percent. And also, like, it's not a guarantee that anyone's going to be invited to a convention. No. We can't just show up. <laughs> they to, think we just sign up for them. No, yeah, we have to be, I can't it's just an invite. roll up to Comic-Con and be like, <laughs> I'm here, like, cater to me. Like, no, no there's tiers of, of uh, fame within that, too, you know? Yeah, like, like, you have to be invited, they have to want you there, and... 
Oh, and it's an lot, honor just, every time I'm invited. I'm listen, like, listen, <laughs> that's and that feeds into my insecurity too. Like for every kid that think or every person that's a little younger than me that's envious of what I'm doing, I'm just as envious of somebody who's ten steps yeah. above me. Yeah. So I it I still have that. It's just not. It doesn't. It doesn't take over. It doesn't. Right. Yeah, I mean, jealousy is, it's a human emotion. It's just whether you can acknowledge it, like, check yourself and then, like, release yeah. it, or whether you let it spiral and, like, overtake you and affect your work and your relationships and your life. Yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so what do you do outside of work to kind of, like, you know, just do something different so you're not thinking about it 24-7? My garden has helped. Oh, I have I my love garden, it. but I, you know, it's a balcony garden, so there's a limit. So then I started doing hydroponic gardening inside. That sounds fancy. Like, I ate my first tomato from my indoor hydroponic. It was about this big, but it was so exciting. You grew it. <laughs> like I made an omelet yesterday, and it was all with herbs from that I went I like went out on my balcony, grabbed some herbs and one little pepper, and oh my God. and it was like really satisfying. Your I thought now, yeah, now I just need a chicken to lay the eggs for the omelet. <laughs> um, but yeah, that honestly, like I could stand out there and just pick the little dead stuff off for hours, and <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> And what about, I know you have a jewelry line. I do. I started making jewelry for fun, and then it kind of just turned into a business. And then some fans were like, hey, you should make some geeky stuff. Or, and then Sam Regal from um, Critical Role was like, Tara, make some dice jewelry. Oh, I didn't know that's where yeah, the inspiration that's, came from. <laughs> it's friggin' Sam. And, uh, Shout out, Sam. And then I, so I learned, I got a mini drill. Like, I did all this research, like, how do I drill through dice? I tried hand drills. I tried a million different things. Finally, mm -hmm. I got a drill that worked. Um, and that sort of is, that's been kind of successful. Because yeah. I, I looked on Etsy, and I thought, there's no high-end uh, jewelry that with this stuff. A lot of it was just, like, $5 cheap stuff. And I thought, yeah. these people want good stuff. Yeah. They just want it to represent what they're into. Yeah. So now I have a whole line of um, Critical Role-inspired jewelry. That's awesome. And it's Looped LA, right? <laughs> LoopedLA.etsy.com. Plug. Plug. <laughs> so lame. I hate doing that. All right. Is there anything else you would like Can to Can I ask share? you questions? Sure. <laughs> How many pairs of Doc Martens do you have? Um, 30. No, really, you have a lot, right? I have so many. Do you know how many you have? I don't know how many. I would say probably 30. My oldest pair I have from high school, and I you only take 30 them 30 pairs of Doc, that's Easily. amazing. You Easily. know what's amazing about it, though, is we have the same size foot, so now I know I can borrow them. I know that there's, thir I won't feel bad asking to borrow them because now I know she has 30 pairs. You can borrow most of them, but you can't borrow my ones from high school because they're like a relic now. And I only take them out for like very special occasions. I have my mom's pair from that th that time. So it's from probably the same years. I want to see them. They're j honestly just the old standard basic. But I want to see because yeah. like that's when they were all made in England. They're different, yeah. yeah. They're different now. I'm amazed. Yeah, okay. So that's a boring question, but that was interesting to me. Like, that's, that's the kind of stuff I want to ask. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. I've, Too I've, uh, many. I wear these the most right now. So I'll yeah. tell you, but I'll tell you, oh, I told you to ask me about this, but oh, okay. my friend, my friend Rob Jones in New York. <laughs> shout does out this, Rob. Shout out Rob. He's a theater guy. Um, very, very talented. But uh, he started something, and that another woman told in an interview that okay. sort of caught on. But when someone would, and he's just so, he, he's someone who can say cutting funny things that like because they're so funny, you don't get offended. But he started doing this thing where like if someone would say something no one cared about, he would be like, nobody cares. Oh like under God. his breath. <laughs> and, and I found that like, I sometimes sing it to myself if I'm like, am I talking about something? <laughs> Nobody cares. <laughs> but I've also found that like, if, if someone's telling you something, they know. Like if you, if you went on a, someone I'll do it to my parents. If they're just talking about something that I'm like, I don't know what they're saying. I'll just go, nobody cares. <laughs> and like, it's funny enough that no one gets offended by it. Like, <laughs> like but it works. Because it also then puts things into perspective. Because you're like, Am I talking about something? Yeah, I'm Am probably... I talking about myself too much right now? Or just something that's not important. You yeah. know, sometimes it's that. Sometimes... I'm going to use it on you. Oh, I, lo <laughs> I love it. Because I want to be called out on that. <laughs> like if, yeah. 
nobody cares. <laughs> so this woman, uh, Kayla, Kyla, I can't remember her name. She, her and this Broadway musical director put it together in like five part harmony and made a whole song out of it. And Ooh. I have to find the link and send it to you. It's so funny. Okay. And <laughs> it's so good. So <laughs> Rob, I stole that from you. We love it. <laughs> nobody cares. <laughs> It's so good, because it's, right? All right, I'm done. It's good. Okay. Let's end this. All right, cool. Well, thank you guys for it. <laughs> if anyone got to the end of this, I, I mean. <laughs> what, our conversation was fascinating. We are fascinating. Yeah. Um, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Thank you, Tara, for coming on. How are you going to follow this? Uh, I don't, it, this is huge shoes to follow. <laughs> but <laughs> I, Size I will, six, but yeah. Hopefully, hopefully somehow. All right. All right. Thanks, guys. Peace. Thank you, Cassandra. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening to Now You See Me. If you found value in this episode, please consider donating to the podcast to show your support. This podcast is fully self-funded from the studio rental to recording to the editing to the graphic design to the distribution platform. All of that costs money and every little bit helps. So, there is a link down below in the show notes where you can send a donation in any amount at all. And like I said, anything really helps. Also, please follow, like, subscribe, and leave a five-star review with your feedback. It really, really helps out me and the pod, especially as we are just getting started. Thank you so much for being here and for your support. Video and audio editing by Chris. Music by Steve Shebby. For collaborations or ad requests, email booking.cassandralemorris at gmail.com. Thanks for listening.